Here are two and a half puppies. Please enjoy the video. What is the greatest ducat? I'll do it myself in history. Juan Pujol Garcia was a Spaniard who created his own counterintelligence operation for the Allies during WW2. Initially, he approached British and American intelligence to offer them his services, but both countries rebuffed him. Undeterred, Garcia created a fictional persona as a pro-fascist Spanish official and got himself recruited by the Nazis, who directed him to travel to Britain to recruit agents. Instead, Garcia created a network of fictitious agents and sub-agents using publicly available information like newspapers and travel brochures. It was at this point that he again contacted Allied Intelligence and he was finally recruited. Garcia continued his work throughout the war and for the same operation, he received both a knighthood from the British and the Iron Cross from Nazi Germany. The Nazis never realized that he was a double agent. In 1947 a guy named Thor Heyerdahl was trying to prove his theory that the Polynesian islands were settled by people from South America, not Asia. Nobody believed him because it was thought that crossing such a large ocean with the technology they had back then was impossible. So he decides to build a boat using only the tools and materials available at the time these migrations took place. And then he sailed that boat across the Pacific Ocean, nearly dying in the process, but ultimately making it to the Polynesian Islands. For context the voyage was 4,340 miles, nearly 7,000 kilometers, and took 101 days. Here's a pic of the raft they built and sailed on. Morris Heilman invented over 40 vaccines during his career in the pharmaceutical industry. In 1963 his oldest daughter caught the mumps. He cultured a sample from her, developed a vaccine, and injected it into his younger daughter. That vaccine is still in use and has saved millions of lives. In total, it's estimated that his work has saved 118 million lives globally. Until Karen came along and ducked it all up by doing her research. Nikola Tesla was tasked with lighting up the world's fair, but Thomas Edison wouldn't allow him to use any of his patents, so Tesla had to invent a new light bulb that didn't use any of Edison's patents and could still have thousands made in time for the event. Tesla was definitely one of the most underrated geniuses of his time. I believe he died penniless in 1943. He chose to be penniless, and releasing Westinghouse from his patents only made it worse. He could have licensed his technology and die in a mansion in New York. With that being said, his name alone today is worth more than the great majority of millionaires of his era. Jon Snow, not that one, the father of epidemiology. No one believed him that the cholera outbreak in what is now Soho was because of a contaminated water pump. He broke it. They arrested him for vandalism and held him until the outbreak suddenly ended. Jon Snow's entire life story is a series of duck it, I'll do it myself moments. From his mother getting the money to send him to school to basically the entirety of his work against cholera. Because all his life it was always you know nothing, Jon Snow. Otis invented pretty much what we consider the modern elevator. Nobody was convinced it was safe, so he hoisted himself up extremely high and had somebody cut the cable with an axe to prove how confident he was that the elevator was safe regardless of almost worst case scenarios. Otis UK are based in Reading. When they answer the phone they say hello, Otis Reading. In the UK telecoms giant Siemens has an HQ in Staines. Guess what they say when they answer the phones. Perhaps when no one believed Barry Marshall that H. pylori can cause stomach ulcers, so he thought screw it, I'll test it on myself, and ended up getting the Nobel Prize. However, I feel it's necessary to point out that Robin Warren, the co-winner of the Nobel Prize, has actually done most of the work for the discovery, but Marshall got all the attention well because of doing this. Bless him. I have an ulcer, and because of him, we have a better understanding of how to treat it. The doctor stationed in Antarctica that removed his own appendix. Got him. Wasn't that more like, duck me, I have to do it myself. I read that in Gordon Ramsay's voice. Brian Acton interviewed at Facebook and got turned down. He said duck it and built WhatsApp. Several years later, Facebook bought WhatsApp for $19 billion. Edit, here is his tweet from 2009 the day he interviewed. I'm getting this framed for my desk at work. Facebook turned me down. It was a great opportunity, 
to connect with some fantastic people. Looking forward to life's next adventure. I downloaded it for free. Cliff style. The cuckoo's egg. Noticed weird traffic on his university servers. No one believed him that there was any risk occurring. Ended up uncovering a major hacking attempt to steal missile designs and basically created internet security. I think it was missile designs. It's been a long time. In 1888, Alman Brown Strouger, an undertaker, noticed he was losing a lot of business to the other undertaker in town. He found out that the other undertaker's wife was a telephone operator, and when she intercepted people asking to be connected to Strouger's funeral home, the operator would route the call to her husband's funeral home instead. Three years later, Strouger patented the automatic teller exchange, a system which allowed telephone users to make calls without the need for human operators, single-handedly destroying an entire workforce. Imagine being so pissed off you don't just get someone fired, but remove their job from existence entirely. James Clark Maxwell was idolized by Einstein as being the father of modern physics. Not only did he formulate the classical theory of electromagnetic radiation, but just for shuts and giggles he calculated exactly what Saturn's rings were made from using pure mathematics. It wasn't until Voyager 1 and 2 passed by and took photos in the early 80s did we get confirmation that Maxwell was right. He then calculated how to take a color photograph in 1855. This was then achieved in 1861 and is recognized as the first ever color photograph. Don't forget his advances in statistical mechanics. Probably the time Nando Parado and Roberto Canessa decided they couldn't wait around any longer and legged it for 10 days across the Andes with no warm clothes, climbing gear, or food except some scraps of their dead friends stuffed into a sock. They finally found someone out in the middle of nowhere, Sergio Catalan, who rode horseback all night and then took a bus to get some help. The mountain climbers had come from the wreckage of a crashed plane that everyone had been looking for for over two months. They needed help for the other survivors who were injured and starving. They saved 14 of their friends. Jonas Salk needed human subjects to test his polio vaccine. That's normally a long process and he wanted to make the vaccine available as quick as possible, so he just experimented on himself. He also didn't patent the polio vaccine I believe, and he tried to help fight the AIDS epidemic even before he died. Henry VIII couldn't get his way with the Pope, so made he made the Church of England, so he could do what he wanted. This man legit made his own damn religion, which millions still follow today, just so he could cheat on his wife. No, no, made his own damn religion, which millions still follow today, just so he could cheat on his wife and his fourth wife. I remember the quote for remembering his wives. Divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. It's gotta be a Mokoivonen. He was a Finnish soldier in the Second World War when the Finns were trying to reclaim land from the Soviets. He got separated from his unit mid-war in the middle of nowhere. He was the one tasked to carry the drugs they held in case of injury or tiredness, one of which was pervitin, which was literal meth in a tablet form. Instead of just taking one or two, he downed the whole bottle and went on a weeks long methed up rampage. He got hit by a landmine, evaded Soviet soldiers, caught a bird, and ate it raw, all while on skis. He finally made it back to finish lines where on arrival, he weighed only 90 pounds or so and had a heart rate of 200 beats per minute. He ended up living for another 45 years. A man who was a tractor mechanic Khan Puniona made a good chunk of money and bought a Ferrari. He felt that the car wasn't as good as it could be and it wasn't very comfortable, so he brought his complaints all the way to Enzo Ferrari, the owner of the company. Enzo insulted the man, saying a mere tractor mechanic didn't know how to make a sports car. That sparked a rivalry that lasts to this day. That man was Firaxio Lamborghini. Not a very old story. Manchi or the mountain men lived in a very remote village of India whose route to nearby was blocked a mountain and hence villagers had to climb it every time. And they had to do that daily to get essential supplies. During one of these trips, his wife fell down the mountain. He loved her alit. He tried first to persuade the gov to do a mountain tunnel project there but to vain. So he went on alone to break the entire mountain with just an axe. He did that for 10 plus years and finally succeeded. There is a Bollywood movie on him too. Title, Manji, The Mountain Man. When Julius Keezer decided to just up 
and ducking Marge into Rome to declare himself the military leader. When Nintendo turned down a collab with Sony, then Sony said, duck it, we'll do it ourself. The rest is history. I'm surprised no one's mentioned Catherine in the Great of Russia. She decided her husband was useless, which, granted, he was, and proceeded to set up a military coup to overthrow him. Even with the plan being discovered early, she dressed herself in military garb and marched with her new army, which had just sworn loyalty to her, down to Peter's palace, where he was forced to resign the throne, all without a single drop of bloodshed. At least until Peter turned up dead sometime later under shady circumstances, but honestly for a military coup it was pretty non-violent. If saying duck it, I'm ruling Russia myself isn't great, I don't know what is. I mean, it's right there next to her name for a reason. It's incredible, especially considering. A. She's a lady. B. She wasn't Russian. C. She wasn't originally Russian Orthodox. The guy who started FedEx wrote a college paper about a nationwide overnight shipping company and got a C. Started the company anyways. Later after he started it, and it was struggling, he couldn't get a loan and the company was almost bankrupt, and he bet next week's payroll at the casino on roulette and won. Also got a silver star in the Vietnam War and now co-owns the Washington Redskins, the latter often viewed as the biggest failure in his life. George Clooney. Bought his own spy satellite to prove the alleged crimes of an African warlords, because nobody else would.